Well, she got everything back in order. Yep, everything that wasn't broken anyway. You said you wanted to talk about that studio business. Oh, yeah. You know, I don't know what else I can do out there. I'd like to help your friends out. They used to be your friends too, Steve. Yeah, well, whatever. I still would like to help them out, but I don't know what I can do. Calvin and I were talking. We decided that maybe I shouldn't do get involved in police matters outside my jurisdiction. And I'm not sure that this is a police matter anymore. Well, I'd sure like to take a look around there. That's right. You've never seen a set, have you? Oh, of course not. It's closed to the public. You're not the public. I thought you had a personal in with the producer. I'd just like to know what's going on around that place. In fact, I'd like to know what's going on around right here. Well, you don't have to worry about anything now that you've got a police lock on your door. What about anonymous phone calls, Steve? Police lock isn't going to stop those. You think that might be him? Hello? Hello? Well, my friend, you've really got the wrong number this time. This happens to be the police department, and we're tracing your call. So take a deep breath. In just a few minutes, a little man is going to be outside your door in a blue uniform. See you in court, friend. There. That should take care of that. Steve, I've told him the same thing myself. It just doesn't help. Oh. Well, does he call often? I don't know. I'm only home a couple of hours out of the day. Frequency's increasing. Of course, the worst ones come late at night. Why don't you uh, leave the phone off the hook? Oh, I can't do that, Steve. We're supposed to be within reach of headquarters 24 hours a day. Lord Deborah, hey, just change your phone number, huh? I've thought about that too, but damn it, I don't want to change anything in my life just for some miserable little punk. Still think Benny Hayes has something to do with this? I don't know. Possibly. I know the kid hates the ground I walk on. He's not the only one. Look, why don't I call a telephone company, have him bring in one of those new installations, we'll put a trace on this guy, have him in no time. You don't have to do that, Steve. You don't have to go to all that trouble for hey, me. Yeah, I'd like to go all, to all that trouble for you. Was the time I'd do anything for you. It still is. I wish I could talk to you about how I feel about my life right now. I suppose you think I've changed a great deal. Well, maybe if I hadn't asked you to marry me, we'd still have the same relationship. Don't blame yourself. Hell, blame me if you want to. I'm still as mixed up as I ever was. More so right now, I guess. Well, you've got one thing in your life that's straight. That's your career. Yeah. At least I've found that. I love the work I do. Never seem to want to do anything else. The only thing that seems to be messed up is maybe your personal life. Yeah, the only thing. Yeah, well, maybe it'd be different if Owen Madison wasn't married. Oh, excuse me, Free. I... Never mind that question. Uh, better get back down to headquarters. Got a lot of work to do. Several lineups I got to look at. A lot of paperwork. Calvin probably needs some help. You know, his leg's still not all 100%. Listen, uh, you got plans this evening? <laughs> no, I think I'll just hang around up here. Uh, maybe make a pumpkin pie? Oh, hey, that's a good idea. Ah, uh, if that uh, creep calls back, give him my love. Yeah. One other thing. What? Uh, give these back to Owen, Madison. What are they? The keys to the studio. I don't think I'll need them anymore. Well, goodbye.
Hello. Hello? Yes, Max. I know it's only a couple of weeks away, but... Max, I got an office to run, right? Right? If I'm out making speeches all the time, who's gonna put the bad guys in jail? Yeah, you're right. Okay. Okay, okay, I'll be there. But I tell you, this is the last appearance. If the voters don't know what I'm all about by now, they're never gonna know. All right. Fine, fine. I said I'll be there. Bye-bye. Logan, you sound like you're headed for the hustings again. Yeah, there's a political rally this weekend at Monticello Gardens. I don't seem to be able to avoid it. Well, of course not. I see no reason why I should. Well, I just don't like the thought of you being stuck here again, that's all. And besides, if anybody should be at that rally on the speaker's platform, it's you. You helped build a party in this town. No, 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 no. I'd much rather have my own rally right here with this little politician. <laughs> yeah, he is sort of a politician, isn't he, huh? Yeah. There you go. You ingratiate yourself with everybody. You don't make any controversial remarks. Only difference between him and me is he wets himself in public. That'll <laughs> be Draper. Coming, sir. Coming, coming. And come in. Nice of you to drop by. It's 50. I just wanted to see how the other half lived. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Geraldine. Draper. How are you? I'm just fine. And how's that lovely wife of yours? She is wonderful. Never been happier. She must be feeling wonderful these days. Looking forward to having one of these oh. tiny little creatures all of her own. Yeah. Which reminds me, this tiny little creature is off to Betty Bar. You're, you're, looking, right you're looking very well yourself today. There you go. Oh, well, it's the effects of late motherhood, I have no doubt. Well, we'll see you in a minute. Sit down, Draper, sit down. Well, old buddy. Yeah? How's the election coming? The uh, poll has it, uh, you way out in front. Well, you know how voters are. They can be fickle. That's, what's made, that's what makes politics so entertaining, you know? Besides, you've seen those not-so-veiled references to Raven in the Monticello Star, I'm sure. Well, uh, try not to let those bother you. <laughs> they don't bother me. But some of the voters might think that a district attorney who can't even lay down the law to his wife is, uh, well... Look, enough of that. Speaking of looking good, you look pretty bright-eyed and bushy-tailed yourself when you walk through that door. Yeah. Because I have some terrific news, Logan. Yeah. Remember that, uh, that lawyer, Henson, from New York? Uh, Seward, Paxson, Whiteside? Right, the one that turned me down for that job as head of their criminal law department. Yeah? The job filled? No, no, the job is not filled. It's Swifty. He wants to see me now. Terrific. Terrific! <laughs> I always thought it was a dirty trick. They decided you couldn't handle it without even giving you the courtesy of an interview, so... Well, I, uh, imagine they have seen the, uh, error of their ways. Oh, yeah. That doesn't mean that I'm, I'm going to get the job or that he will even like me or think that I'm right for it. But at least I'm going to get an honest shot at it. All the other partners like you. You're a shoe in right? You know, come to think of it, I'm not sure this is entirely good news. You get that job, you and April, you'll move away, right? Yeah. I mean, I just lost my wife. Now i got to lose my best friends. <laughs> well, there we are. He's sleeping like a baby. <laughs> what else? <laughs> And Draper's left? Yeah, he said to say goodbye to you. Well, that was a rather short visit. Well, he just came by to tell me some news. That's very good news, judging by your expression. Well, good news for him. That job he was so excited about a little while ago has opened up again. He's got another shot at it. I should have reacted a little less selfishly than I did. I couldn't help it, though. I hate to lose him. Don't have that many friends in Monticello. Draper, April, and you. That's it. Thank you for that. But are you sure there isn't something else responsible for that rather sad look in your eye? Well, it's nothing serious. Nothing unexpected, anyway. Got this little darling in the morning mail. They forwarded it from the old apartment. What is it? Legal document. Separation agreement. All I have to do is sign on the dotted line there, and this marriage is handed. I see. Not a divorce. No, nope, not a divorce. Next best thing, though. All Raven and I have to do is stay away from each other for a year, and it becomes a divorce, automatically. Yeah, you don't know. You might want that divorce sooner than you think. Well, after all, Logan, you might meet someone else, for instance. Sort of hard to imagine myself with someone else right now. <laughs> oh, well, there will be. I can assure you of that. Mm -hmm. Besides, you'll be the most, the most eligible young man about town. 
attractive, accomplished, and very, very nice. Well, I'm certainly in no hurry. Right now, all I need is Jamie and you, sweetheart. did you do? Mm. You buy out the entire store? Well, I'm afraid I did get carried away, but uh, look at this. I mean, do you think the baby can resist him? Mm. I think that she will love him. Okay, speaking he, she, I think it's about time that we start picking out names. April, you're only three months pregnant. I think it's a bit premature to pick out names or even buy this nursery stuff. Well, I couldn't wait. Besides, this was bought with part of the money that Eddie Vaughn sent over. And I just wanted to spend a little of it before it disappears, like money usually disappears. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't mind having some of that money spent on this month's fuel bill. Did you see it already? It's yes. enormous. It's not even winter yet. Yes. It's cheaper to burn the money. Draper, I did see it. But we, we decided beforehand that this money was going to be spent for the nursery. Besides, remember, I did earn it myself. Yeah, I know you earned it. And you thought it was going to be an easy buck. But after what happened, we can see now that it wasn't. Draper, I have forgotten all about that. Oh, good. I just want you to keep on forgetting about it. Don't think you had a vision because you okay. didn't. Okay, okay, okay. Everyone seems to think that. Including Margo. Speaking about Margo, when are we having dinner with her? We didn't pick a day. Why not? I thought we said it was definite. No, it wasn't definite. We work, she works. Hey, I don't think she easy. can make... Take it easy. Hey, look, honey, I really don't care to have dinner with her. I mean, it was her suggestion. What's the matter? I mean, you don't look very enthusiastic about it. Why? Because. Because I have tonight's dinner to think about that. So I'll get it. Hello. Oh, um, yeah, he is. Just a second, please. What is it? It's, uh, Mr. Henson from New York. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, Mr. Henson. Well, so am I, Mr. Scott. I'm not too fond of hospitals, but it seems the last visit I made quite a hit with the doctors and nurses, and so they're requesting a repeat performance. Well, how long do you think you'll be in there? Oh, that's a little hard to say. I was there almost three weeks. The last time, with any luck at all, uh, maybe they can get around to these tests a little sooner. Well, I certainly hope so, for your sake. You know, I'm really sorry this had to happen just when we were about to get together, and I regret that we weren't able to meet that other time. But you still came up with a negative vote. Well, I... I realize, of course, that that was a mistake, uh, not to have met you in person. And believe me, I intend to correct that mistake. I owe it to the firm. Uh, however, it looks as if we'll have to delay the meeting for a little while anyway. I understand. It shouldn't be more than a few weeks, maybe a month at the outset, but then you'll, you'll have first priority, right? Yes, sir. I, I appreciate your calling and telling me this. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Well, what happened? He, uh, he didn't cancel the interview, did he? Uh, no. He postponed it. He's going into the hospital again. Oh. Well, I'm sorry. I know it. I know it's a disappointment. <laughs> It just couldn't be helped, I guess. I mean, it shouldn't make any difference, should it? The one difference it could make, they might find the right person for the job before they see me again. Oh, no, Trevor, they wouldn't do that. They wouldn't, they wouldn't hire anyone else without seeing you first. I mean, I'm absolutely sure of that. I was so primed for this interview. April, I was so positive I was going to get the job this time. You are going to get it. Draper, listen to me. It is just a matter of time. I know that. I know that. Okay, no one, no one is going to stand in your way this time. Hear me? No one. 
I know how you feel, Paige, honestly. How could you, Brian? You weren't the one frightened half out of her mind by a horrible practical joke. Mom didn't mean it as a joke. She really thought that dangling that stupid rubber rat in front of you was going to help the scene. I thought you were the director of the movie, Brian. Wasn't it up to you to decide what would help the scene? Oh, hell, I'm no director. God knows why I took this movie on in the first place. I mean, all I've directed in my life were Navy training films and a couple documentaries. Brian, would you have let your mother frighten me that way? No, no, I wouldn't. I thought it was a, a terrible idea. It wasn't even in the script. It was all her own doing. And I don't think she did it for the benefit of the movie either. Well, you heard Mom's explanation. By springing this little surprise on you, she did get a look of total surprise on your face, Paige. Look, you remember the movie The Turning Point? <laughs> yes. All right, remember the it? scene? Remember the scene where Anne Bancroft throws a glass of water into Shirley MacLaine's face? Well, that was the same kind of thing. See, Shirley MacLaine wasn't expecting that bit of business, and it made for a very effective reaction. A glass of water? Yeah. But a rat? Brian, I'm horribly afraid of rats, of anything that crawls for that matter, and Nolan knew it too. All right, she was wrong. She admitted she was wrong. Not to me. Paige, you just can't walk out on this movie because of this one incident. It isn't fair to anybody. You don't have that much of me on film, Brian. You can find a replacement, and she'll probably do a much better job. Oh, I think you're doing just fine, his patience, Paige. You're, you're exactly the way I visualized her when I read the script. You're young, innocent, appealing, and God knows, very, very beautiful. Oh, Ryan, don't you see there's more to this than Nola's explanation? There's some deep hatred behind her act. No, Paige, no, I don't see that at all. Well, you do know that she hates me, and she hates me now more than ever because I'm friends with Deborah. Paige, we all have to put aside any personal feelings right now. We've got to get this picture made. Why? Because it's going to make things better for this family? That's what we keep saying, isn't it? But what's going to change, Brian? We'll still be what we are. A brother and a sister who should have been lovers. And Daddy will never be happy living with your mother. Even if she becomes Nola Patterson movie star, he's still not going to be in love with her because he's in love with Deborah. Okay, okay, it's not going to change a damn thing. But that is, that's no reason that it has to fall apart. No, I, I don't want it to fall apart. I want the movie to be a success too, especially now, now that you're the director beginning of a whole new career for you, a wonderful career. I don't have any illusions about that, Paige. I'm, I'm just thinking about our parents and what it'll mean to them. Brian, there's something wrong with your mother. I know I, sh I, I, I shouldn't say it, but I see it so clearly and you just refuse to. She's not drinking. No, no, she's not. I feel that she's found something else within her that is just as unhealthy. Now, that's just what I think, and I, and I, I don't know what to call it. I'm, I'm no doctor, but I... I think that she's let her jealousy poison her mind. She's not normal. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't say anything. I don't know anything about no, it. No, Paige, no, it's okay. I... I've noticed it, too. Uh, who can help but notice it? Listen. I'm not going to quit that picture. I'm acting like a baby. I'm not going to desert the ship so long as you get the rats overboard, okay? <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 